All right, the Rambling BKC podcast has returned once again, and today we're going to talk about the piece of GSC history that has just been made. Even though the metagame is older than much of the modern player base, it still continues to evolve in meaningful ways, and this is exemplified by the significance of the change we're going to be discussing today, the fact that Cloyster has been recognized more or less universally as the number three Pokemon in the metagame. Now, this is not going to dramatically shift the landscape of the tier. We're not going to suddenly see the metagame in a new light and change everything about how we think about and play it. But it is still a big deal. And to understand why it is a big deal, we have to go back in time and see where the metagame has evolved from. So, the top four Pokemon in GSC used to be Snorlax, Zapdos, Raikou, Exeggutor. Then after that usually came Cloyster, and then you had your other guys like Skarmory and Steelix and Gengar and Tyranitar in the mix. But Cloyster was generally, you know, top five at best, and Exeggutor was more or less undisputed as number four. Sure, you had some people who, you know, had divergent opinions, like some people really liked Raikou at number two, and some people like Cloyster at number four over Eggy, but for the most part, uh, the Exeggutor as number four behind the two electrics thing was the conventionally accepted wisdom. Uh, here you see a post from Borat, the most renowned authority on GSC in history, and uh, then when the first viability rankings came around for GSC in 2014, then there was some uh, debate, but you see here in M Dragon's post with the sprites that are no longer there. Let's see, so there's Snorlax, and then there's uh, Zapdos and Raikou. He's got uh, both electrics there, and then he's got uh, the the Exeggutor at number four. So it used to be seen as there was Snorlax, it was just, it's Snorlax tier, and then you had the Electrix tier, Zapdos and Raikou. Zapdos usually above Raikou for its spikes immunity, and uh, earthquake immunity and fighting resistance, and uh, just <laughs> and being stronger as well. But uh, for the most part, it was Snorlax, Electrix, then number four, usually Exeggutor. So uh, then Exeggutor kind of started falling out of the metagame around uh, 2017, 2018 when uh, Borat actually made this style of offense that came to define GSC for many years, uh, that being the standard Spikes offense of Snorlax, Zapdos, Cloyster, Exeggutor, uh, Steelix, and then usually Vaporeon, a lot of other people use Machamp, there are a bunch of six Pokemon you could use there. But such Exeggutor Cloyster offense teams were utterly ripped apart by Jinx. And Exeggutor was usually the only Pokemon that truly gave Jinx such free entry and was so utterly dominated by it. And uh, Jinx kind of started taking Exeggutor's place. So, let me skip this ad. So, uh, yeah, Exeggutor started dropping out of the metagame. And, or sorry, not out of the metagame, but out of its place as number four. I mean, it was still a great Pokemon, obviously, but you can no longer slap together, you know, Exeggutor offense and automatically succeed with it because of how dominant Jinx was. And that's its own uh, video later on. But for now, all we have to understand is that Exeggutor was no longer really number four. And uh, thus, when the new viability rankings were, you know, tossed around, in uh, 2018, then I was one of the people advocating, because I have to make it about myself, but I was one of the people advocating for Cloyster to be number four. Uh, I will leave all these threads in the description. Uh, their links are there in case you want to peruse them at your own leisure. And uh, yeah, so here, it, it wasn't just an obvious thing that Cloyster was uh, going to be the new number four behind Zapdos and Raikou, but uh, we had to make it official, because Eggy had been falling out, and there's nothing really that can take Cloyster's place uh, in terms of splash ability and game-to-game -game effectiveness. Now, of course, Cloyster most directly competes, quote-unquote, with Fortress, but it's usually the other way around. Usually you find a reason to use Fortress over Cloyster, Cloyster is the default, and that's why it's ranked so highly. 
However, uh, number four is still you know highly impressive, and uh, the viability rankings eventually shifted, and Snorlax, Zapdos, Cloyster, Raikou, uh, sorry, that's uh, what it looks like today because it's been edited, uh, can you, yes, you can see that, April 28th, 2021, despite the thread uh, being originated in 2018. So uh, that's what it looks like today. But back then, then it was generally agreed upon that uh, Cloyster was number four. Oh, and here you see uh, this uh, th this post from Fear with this lovely uh, paint picture uh, shows that this was is GSC Snorlax and the Electrics. Now, how you might view the separation between Snorlax and Zapdos and or Raikou may differ, you know, if you have any separation between them at all, but that's generally Lax, Electrics, Rest. Cloyster then became, you know, the very clear choice for number four, but the idea of it displacing Raikou is just hard to, uh, re really hard to wrap your head around. Uh, and, uh, see in this place, then you see Egg falling further as, uh, players being more and more down on it. So, uh, and Zapdos versus Raikou stuff, you know, that's another video, Zapdos versus Raikou and GSC. So, uh, yeah, basically, uh, Cloyster number four behind the Electrics 2018, 2019, 2020, but around, you know, 2020-ish last year, people are thinking, man, you know, I I'm kind of getting down on uh, this Raikou thing. And uh, so we have to ask, why are why would people go from you know this defining GSC Pokemon, uh, you know why would it fall and why would it be replaced by what is ostensibly just a Spiker? Well, uh, we will explain why now. So the difference between Raikou and Zapdos, in a nutshell, is uh, that Raikou is used more defensively. Uh, because Zapdos dishes the thunders out, Raikou absorbs the thunders and dishes them out, but it doesn't dish them out as hard, i.e. it doesn't scare Snorlax as badly. And the main reason that Raikou really started to fall down was, well, first of all, it's a uh, an electric type stopped by ground types, which is why Zapdos is so ridiculously monstrous, because ground types are not good Zapdos answers at all, whereas they are pretty good Raikou answers. Uh, and also threatens Snorlax, you know, not so well. And uh, there's also the fact that Raikou gets hit by spikes. So it's better, you know, it counters Zapdos, whereas Zapdos does not counter Zapdos. But it start, it gets, it switches into a lot of attacks throughout the course of the game, and then when it's forced to rest, then it can be really exploitable. You know, most teams cannot fit Heal Bell. Uh, and, you know, most of the teams that do fit Heal Bell use Blissey, and if you use Blissey, you don't need Raikou as your special wall, and you can instead run Zapdos alongside it for the Machamp check. And because you should be running Zapdos most of the time. So, uh, double electric stuff is also great, but again, more specific. So, the basic idea is that if you want to use Raikou, that you have to run Sleep Talk over the traditional Roar set, or you're just way too exploitable while asleep, uh, not threatening enough, and you just really let your opponent run their offense all over you. I mean, even against defensive teams, and being able to, unable to threaten uh, anything in your sleep lets Fortress come in and threaten a spin on you com for completely for free, and that's huge in longer games based around spikes. And uh, generally, people would gravitate towards, you know what, I'll handle Zapdos another way, and I'll use my own Zapdos. You can, you know, you use both electrics, but, uh, again, there's more variety. There's nothing that really replaces Zapdos, whereas there are several different ways you can choose to not really replace Raikou, but kind of, uh, kind of find other Pokemon or combinations of Pokemon that can fill its defensive role. Uh, giving you more diversity, whereas there's nothing else that does what Zapdos does. So that's why Raikou uh, really started to fall down. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, when I say fall down, it's not falling down as far as Exeggutor. Exeggutor fell down harder, but it's still a great Pokemon, and Raikou is still an elite GSC Pokemon. However, uh, it is harder to fit simply because of what we just said. It It is not 
thoroughly unique in what it does. I mean, yes, it, it is the best Pokemon to switch into Zapdos and threaten in return. I mean, even Snorlax doesn't like switching into Zapdos Thunder just with spikes down. But it is not the only Pokemon that can do that. Whereas Zapdos, the unkillable machine and top offensive threat, all just in one set, then... No, it's not quite the same. And of course, uh, Zapdos has set variety as well. Whirlwind has been quite popular in uh, recent times. But the point is, Zapdos is Zapdos, and there's nothing else that can do what it does. And Raikou... Can, Raikou... Raikou's role being... negotiable. You know, you, you can't replace Zapdos doing what it does, but you can replace what Raikou does with things like grounds and electrics. Uh, sorry, grounds and uh, grass is mostly, uh, like Exeggutor. Combinations of those, bulky Pokemon like Titar, uh, spreading lots of paralysis. You can generally make up for Raikou's defensive utility against Pokemon like Zapdos and others like Jinx and Gengar and Vaporeon. So, you use Zapdos pretty much all the time, and uh, Raikou can uh, be harder to fit. Now, I'm not saying that there are teams that can fit, that uh, don't fit Raikou, or, or I'm not saying that there aren't teams that fit Raikou and don't fit Zapdos. There are a few very good stall teams like that, but they are the minority. Zapdos, uh, there are some people who are so, uh, they, they love Zapdos so much and for good reason that they think, you know, every GSC team should be Snorlax and Zapdos, not Snorlax and an Electric, Snorlax and Zapdos. Now, I personally do not fall into that camp myself, but I think most of the time, a uh, you know, a vast majority of the time, you should have Snorlax and Zapdos. And uh, so, and now we get to why Cloyster is eclipsing Raikou, because Cloyster fits on way, way, way more teams than Raikou, because Cloyster is like Zapdos in the sense that it fits on, like, every team. Uh, I mean, like, so uh, another little tenet of GSC is that some players think you have to have either spikes or spin. Uh, I'll just go ahead and say now, you know, the only kinds of teams that are exceptions to the spike, spin, and the lax plus electric stuff, that's a uh, full baton pass stuff, which doesn't necessarily have to have one of Zapdos or Raikou. They still often have Jolteon, but, you know, one of the legendary electrics. And even then, they don't necessarily have to, even though they tend to, most of the time. Anyway, point being, uh, Baton Pass is the exception, so, you know, if you think, hey, I saw a Baton Pass team that didn't have Zapdos or Raikou or Cloyster, then I'll let you know, that's the exception. Besides those, then usually GSC teams are Snorlax, Zapdos, and at least one of spikes or spin and uh, several top players would go even further and say you need spikes you know non-spin stuff it's not impossible to execute and i myself do not think that it is uh necessary truly to bring spikes but if you're not bringing spikes you better have spin and a very cohesive offensive attack to make up for it because spikes are just incredible and most of the time i'm talking you know 99 times out of 100 you are going to bring spikes in some form and uh, this is made even better by the fact that Cloyster is quite a decent check to none other than Snorlax. It's not a hard counter or anything, considering it has to explode to really damage it, but it helps you dance around Lax while uh, maintaining offensive momentum. It's not like Skarmory, which completely goes on the defensive to shut Snorlax down. Uh, Cloyster toxics it, wears Snorlax down, and threatens explosion, and then lets you position yourself to take advantage of the poisoned or uh, the lax that's you know forced to rest, or it can threaten to take a chunk out of the opposing team's defensive core with explosion because the Pokemon that resist Surf, uh, or, sorry, the Pokemon that resist explosion do not enjoy Cloister Stab Surf. You know, rocks and steels do not want to take it. Even the ghost types in the tier, Misdravis and Gengar, I mean, they can take Surf decently, and uh, in fact, that's why Gengar is so often a response to Cloyster in games, uh, on teams that have Gengar, uh, because unlike Zapdos, it can switch into Cloyster without fearing explosion. But even Gengar and Missy, then they don't like Surf with spikes down. Cloyster hits uh, the normal resist in the tier very hard with explosion. It's the same uh, logic that makes Vaporeon such a threat on explosion teams. 
uh, and those explosion teams have Cloister, of course. But it's the same logic because Vaporeon's counters do not resist normal, so if you are luring Vaporeon's counters in with explosion Pokémon, then you will be able to effectively explode on them. They don't resist normal. And uh, Cloister is like a one Pokémon encapsulation of that concept. So uh, Cloister fits into fits onto teams really easily for this ease of spikes. And you're thinking, well, why is it why is it not neck and neck with Foratris? Well, Cloister is fast. 238 speed doesn't look like a lot, but that's really fast in GSE. If we want to look at the other Pokemon in the tier, it outspeeds several of the faster, or not even faster, it just outspeeds uh, several of the offensive Pokemon in the tier. It outspeeds Eggy, it outspeeds Machamp. That's really big. Uh, and those are two of the most, it outspeeds Vaporeon as well. That's really, really big. And... Uh, so when you're able to outspeed and threaten explosion on pokes like that, then it's that's really huge. There's also the fact that Cloyster is very difficult to Oko without a stab electric move from full health. So uh, this is in stark contrast to Fortress, who is slow and deathly afraid of fire moves. I mean, Fortress can't even spike on a Machamp safely because, whoops, it's faster and add fire blast and he died. Whereas Cloyster spikes in Machamp's face freely. Full health Cloyster spikes on plus one Machamp because it lives cross chop at max HP. It does 99% max. You can spike and then boom because you're fast. Uh, whereas Fortress is not. Now, Fortress obviously has a lot of other strengths. Cloyster versus Fortress is its own video as well. But, uh, you know, the toxic immunity mainly. But Cloyster is so excellent because its speed and lack of crippling fire resistance makes it so much more fitting for every type of team. I mean, especially offense, but Cloyster fits on stall really well as well because a lot of time, early game, Fortress finds it really hard to safely set up on uh, teams that can hit it hard from every angle. Snorlax might carry fire, you know, the electrics deal tons with uh, Thunder. Uh, opposing Cloyster hits it really hard with Surf. Uh, the whole Cloyster versus Fortress matchup is its own, uh, it's again, part of its own video. And, uh, you know, Eggy might have fire, Gengar might have fire, Machamp, Nidoking, you know, there's sleep everywhere. It, and Cloyster's speed lets it kind of bypass that and just aggressively get that spike up. And spikes is really, really big. And that's another change from the GSC days of old that is kind that has uh, let people, or is, that has led to people appreciating Cloyster and its talents more. Uh, for example, a lot of, and you see sometimes even old school players nowadays saying, you know, spikes aren't that good, but the players that have uh, come around in the last, let's say, half decade, then they're saying, yeah, yeah, I mean, spikes, you, you gotta have them, or, or they're, uh, you can't undervalue them, rather. Now, and, and I uh, count myself in that camp. Now, I'm not saying that spikes do all the work for you, obviously, but they have to be considered. You can't not have a plan to deal with spikes in uh, GSC. And uh, to show you the disparity in these viewpoints, then I would show you if I can. There it is. Yeah, so this old post from Gene or G80, who uh, used to be one of the best GSC players around before he retired. And uh, he posted his GSC team here. And this is a team without spikes and with Zapdos and Nido King. And uh, the you know added, added emphasis on things like uh, Drumlax and you know trying to counter Marowak, then that is also reflective of the older, more stallier perspective on GSC. And uh, matter of fact, that older stallier perspective on GSC was what Borat's original Cloister Eggy uh, Vaporeon Explosion offense team was trying to disrupt. So. Uh, but this is an example of that old perspective, uh, very common. And uh, nowadays, you would not see Nido King without spikes, ever. Never, ever, ever. And uh, you, he even uh, goes on to mention it here. He uh, says he doesn't really think spikes is that good in GSC, but he doesn't like dealing with it. That's why he has the star me to spin, so he can play the long game and uh, position himself to get the get his uh, drum lax in position. So... There, there you go. There's that perspective change for you. Uh, is the music still playing? Oh, it's just quiet. Okay. Anyway, so uh, greater emphasis on spikes in the modern day. I mean, now, uh, 
we're not talking like a complete paradigm shift. People always liked spikes and cloister and fortress and you know spin blocking with ghosts and pursuing ghosts with T-tar to get spins off and whatnot. But uh, in more recent years, it's been uh, the odds that you face a spikeless team in GSC has severely, severely decreased. Whereas you know just half a decade ago ish, then. You know, people were regularly bringing, you know, Starmie stall with no spikes to, you know, late stages of official tournaments. So, speaking of rapid spin, uh, I we mentioned that Cloister fits on even stall teams. Now, the one thing that Fortress has over, or one of the things that Fortress has over Cloister is the fact that it can run both rapid spin and explosion. Cloister cannot. You have to run either spin or boom. However, it is still a good rapid spin Pokemon on defense. I've even liked it on offense sometimes, although that was really before I started spamming Golem all the time. And before uh, Golem became its own part of the metagame. Another video. So much, uh, so many things about GSC to talk about. It's so beautiful how this metagame keeps developing. Anyway, so you can spin on it on lots of stall teams. And it's, it's very effective. Uh, or, you know, I'm just showing, you know, I'm just showing the most standard set because this is the one that you slap on any team and have good results with. But it has a lot of variety. It's not like it's beholden to running this set. And that's another similarity it has with Zapdos. Zapdos could run the Rest Talk set every single... What was that thing I, I said here? You know, I'm just going to quote myself from three years ago. Um, yeah, you could use you could use the Rest Talk Zapdos in every GSC match for the rest of your life and it'd be useful in every single one. Because you can know with absolute 100% certainty your opponent is bringing one and you can try to spin it to your advantage somehow, but you can never really punish your opponent for it. And that was written about Zapdos, and it really counts for Cloyster as well. And of course, the fact that it can play with other options just makes it even better. Uh, so, uh, you have, for example, the uh, Rapid Spin set, and that gives it more variety on certain teams that don't want to take up another slot on a spinner. And then you have other things like on more offensive teams, then you run HP Electric over Toxic sometimes. Just just because that Cloister on Cloister matchup happens in a ton of games, and sometimes you don't want to Toxic the opposing Cloister, you want the more immediate damage of HP Electric. It's a really big deal. And uh, it can be a really big deal. Of course, without Toxic, you don't threaten Starmie as much, and you don't force Snorlax to rest. And that's why Toxic is generally preferred. But it is a very a viable option, of course. And uh, the DV drop really, you know, bites. Like, you can't live Machamp uh, from full health at uh, guaranteed anymore. At f uh, plus one cross drop. And you're a little... You're worse at switching into, like, uh, Snorlax as well. But it's still generally a great set. Uh, you can run things like Ice Beam. You can run both stabs if you're looking to, you know, go freeze fishing. Or you can run... Uh, Ice Beam as your main stab alongside Toxic. That's an underrated set, I think. It can run things like Icy Wind to really mess with Zapdos switch-ins, Gengar switch-ins, help out itself and its own teammates. Uh, it can run Clamp and Screech to really ruin uh, uh, Curse Lax. You know, make sure you take down the Lax with you. That is a great, great trade if you can get their Lax for your Cloister. Obviously, with Spikes, of course, for the long-term effect of getting Spikes. And then, of course, taking Snorlax out. It's ideal. Uh, of course, you know, Clamp Screech is a lot less threatening at immediately dishing out damage. Like, you're not putting pressure on Gengar, switching into Spikes with Surf, uh, switching into Surf with Spikes down. But, still a great set. And then there are things like Substitute, because Substitute blocks Giga Drain in GSC, so you completely dominate Fortress one-on-one. -on -one. And you dodge Toxics, and uh, you force Electrics to hit multiple Thunders, you can mess with them that way. It has a lot of variety, lots of things it can mix and match, match with. I'm also really partial to Miracle Berry on super fast teams. Uh, that So you don't get slowed down by eating a Sleep Move or you know a Body Slam Paralysis. It's, uh, it's really effective for... So, essentially, Cloister can run just one set on every team and be great, but the fact that it can mix up what it can do, uh, or rather, the besides laying down spikes, it can mix up how it can mess with the opponent, and that just serves to make it even better, especially because it is getting those spikes down so reliably every game. I mean, like, it, it's not as simple as just pack star made, because that can be spun a million different ways. You know, you toxic it, there's uh, ghosts, there's double switch electric pressure, a lot of things you can do. So... Yeah, Cloyster is incredibly consistent every game. And now, if we want to... Uh, we're going to look at some evidence of... Uh, now, uh, before uh, we go into this, I want to preface this by saying I do not think that usage necessarily correlates to viability. 
uh, especially in you know with data that comes from best of one tournaments where people like to hop on the latest trends and uh, you know they like to take risks they like to read their opponents uh, and it's less of a truly metagame reflecting state but it's still a generally generally it's an interesting base to look at how the metagame has developed because this cloister is you know more effective at being slapped on teams and performing on a game-to-game -game basis that idea did not come as a result of the usage stats it came as a result of look at all these teams that cloister fits on better as as opposed to raikou so we will look at the uh first we're going to look at the sample teams for gsc which are uh, kept well updated, and then we will look at the usage stats from the past several years. So, see, here's the arc typical uh, cloister offense, uh, Nita King Machamp offense. Now, I will say, generally, you can slot in Fortress on these kinds of teams, but it's not as easy to use for the reasons we already mentioned. You know, the slow, the fire weak. The, it's uh, so, and the reason is, and uh, you can see here, cloister is spammed on these teams for a reason. Uh, so, uh, cloister, cloister, cloister. This kind of team, this uh, the belly, the uh, belly lax and the Marowak mill tank stuff that can and often has been run with cloister in the past. Uh, that one doesn't have Zapdos, but uh, people were shifting also to running Zapdos and Blissey as the electric and the special sponge and cleric, as opposed to Raikou and mill tank. Uh, so that's another uh, shift away from this old, older style of GSC. And, uh, and also, while they were doing that, they were also running Cloyster. So if you were to run this Belly Lax uh, Marowak team now, you would go something like Zapdos, Blissey, uh, Cloyster, Snorlax, Skarmory, Marowak. Uh, now you would be worse against Firelax, for example, much, much worse. But it's uh, the kind of... Th that's just generally the kind of shift that uh, the metagame has been moving towards. So... Uh, then there's Mistrava's stall. This kind of stall uh, often uses Cloister for. And actually, we're gonna scroll down and see. Like there's a like this. That's double dooms, double dog boom stall that ABR and I made uh, also like three years ago. And then that was another case of Cloister over Foray just because of the flexibility. And, you know, Starmie Fortress stall. We've seen a lot of a uh, Cloister Starmie stall. See, there's a Cloister. 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 Uh, you know, that could also be a Cloister. Oh, and uh, notice how Zapdos is on most of these Cloister things as well. And when there is Raikou, then uh, I don't really like this team very much. I don't, I don't think it should really be there. It's a, it's a nice idea, but generally... Raikou and Steelix is generally not a great idea. That should be a Zapdos. If this team had a Zapdos, then I would like it much more. Uh, so, here's more Cloister, Zapdos, Cloister, Zapdos. Uh, Zapdos, Blissey, Stall. See, this is the more updated version. Uh, you know, Nido King, Gengar, Cloister. So, you see, this is why this is a, an example of why Cloister is so easy to fit. And it's not as simple as just thro you know substituting Cloister with a Fortress. And you'll also notice that this is uh, also the Raikou example. You could slot in Raikou here, but it's generally not as necessary or automatic, and you give yourself a lot more of a diverse attack by finding different ways to handle the opposing electrics um, and therefore and when you do that on defense then you also open up your options on offense as opposed to just electric over and over again with Raikou it makes you more varied and threatening both in the team builder and in the battle so uh, now we're going to go through the past five SPLs the usage stats of uh, GSC cumulatively and we're going to now remember usage is not equal viability but it can be indicative of a larger trend the uh, as i went over in my win rate stat video which you should check out if you haven't uh it is not the statistics are not the end all be all but they definitely might be indicating something that is going on in the metagame and if that is the case then you should look into the games that are being played and the teams that are being brought and analyze those and uh in that case then you can say yes this uh, usage statistic it reflects this happening in the metagame and uh, in this case, we have already gone over the happenings of the metagame that have led to Cloister 
well, first of all, Exeggutor dropping, and then Cloyster eclipsing Raikou, and now we're going to look at the stats. So, uh, 2017. So, GSC. Look, Snorlax, Cloyster, Zapdos. Cloyster, actually, in this original post I made when I said it, uh, it has often eclipsed uh, Zapdos, it's like it's number two or three pretty much every year, and uh, this post even goes back further than uh, SPL 2017. It goes back to you know 2014, and uh, it, all in those as well. Uh, then you can go back even further before this, you know, three years prior to this uh, uh, tournament stat uh, archival that we're looking at now. And for the three years prior to that, then it's the same story. Cloyster, if it's not number two, then it's number three behind Zapdos, and Raikou's always number four. And that reflects th what we have been talking about this entire time. So, 2017, Cloyster number two ahead of Zapdos. Uh, SPL 2018, Cloyster ahead of Zapdos. SPL 2019, Cloyster, once again, number two, uh, with 69 uses, and it's again ahead of Zapdos. SPL 2020. Cloyster is once again ahead of Zapdos, sitting at number two. SPL 2021, this one wrapped up a few months ago. Cloyster is number three. And it's still uh, ahead of Raikou, by a good amount, by the way. Look at that, 65% usage versus 40% usage. Uh, that's, a, that's a big gap. That is highly significant. Uh, so, and that is the whole idea. Uh, that Cloyster is way easier to fit on Raikou than Raikou on teams. So, of the past five SPLs, Cloyster has been number two in usage for four of them and number three in usage for the most recent one, behind Zapdos. Uh, now, these usage stats are not perfect because sometimes Pokemon don't show up, and that's why Snorlax doesn't have a 100% win rate. See here, it says uh, missing one Pokemon. It does that uh, most years. I don't know why it's not saying that in the other ones, but it usually does. Uh, I think it does that on a week-to-week -week basis. Yeah, see, a week-to-week -week basis and in, uh, in the week one stats. So. Uh, sometimes things go missing, but the general idea remains, especially because there is no GSC game, I mean, barring some weird, uncharacteristic early forfeit, that there's no GSC game that has a cloister that isn't going to see the cloister thrown into battle. You know, that, that's cloister's whole deal, that it switches into pretty much every game. It switches in and sees a lot of action every game, and it does so reliably because it's hard to kill. And, uh, I mean, it's, it switches in and eats two T-Tar rock slides with spikes. It's crazy. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the gist of it. That is the gist of it. So, I mean, this is crazy. I mean, it's almost sacrilegious because if you told... You know, not even an, an old school GSC player, but if you told the GSC player from a few years ago, hey, you know, Cloyster, you know, the metagame is going to shift away from Lax and the two electrics, then they would look at you like you're crazy. It's like, no, that is GSC. As we have uh, established, you know, not just the old player in this video, we've looked at old players saying it and, you know, more modern players saying it. You know, Lax and GSC. Relax and the electrics. That is GSC. Everything else comes after. Yeah, you got your spikes and your booms and your stall, but you know, lax and the electrics are the cornerstone of all of that. And now it's really shifted to lax and mostly Zapdos and then Cloyster. So it's really interesting how that's come about, and uh, that's that's the general idea. So uh, I just wanted to make sure that was everything I wanted to. Oh, here's an argument about. Uh, pass. So yeah, oh, Ra Roar Ra goes to rest at some point. This random post is just, look at that, uh, That's that encapsulates why uh, Raikou has fallen down as well. It's classic set was just found more and more exploitable over the years. And Sleep Talk Raikou was great, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't have the, you know, that lack of spikes and ground immunity uh, is just irreplaceable. And the fact it doesn't hit as hard uh, the fact that it's weak to Earthquake instead of being immune to it is a huge, and 
uh, and the fact it doesn't threaten Snorlax as badly. And it also has a lower defense stat, so it takes more in a one-on-one -on -one against Lax. Not to mention it can be hit by a Lax Earthquake. So, uh, but even just like a double edge is more threatening to it. And, uh, you know, yeah, so that's, uh, that's basically it. And, wow, that took less time than I thought it would. So, thank you guys for, oh, oh, sorry, I, uh, wanted to get through one more thing. So, uh, so last year's viability rankings, you know, yearly update, uh, so May 2020, then this was the consensus, this was the time it was updated to Snorlax, Zapdos, and then there was a separation between Zapdos and Raikou, fair enough, but Raikou and Cloyster very much together. And uh, it's still Snorlax, Zapdos, then... So, like, this last year, 2020, you could see that you could, uh... You could feel Raikou was kind of coming down from its place above the rest of GSC. I mean, alongside Zapdos and Snorlax. So those three were above the rest of GSC. And you could see it as that, or you could just see Cloyster being seen as more and more incredible and essential and all that. You know, uh... Perspective is up to you. But, you know, either way, the idea last year then cloister overtaking raikou didn't seem so absurd i remember some people were uh were saying it already and i was thinking you know i, I kind of i can kind of agree so uh raikou was just you know kind of brought down to earth a little more but you know it was still kind of you know, just like oh i don't know if it's better than cloister but uh or, or if cloister is better than it but you know the the foundation for this change was put into place back then and uh, here you can see, uh, you know, closed again even further. And, oh yeah, see, so here are the, the players who ranked it above Raikou. So again, you can uh, read all this stuff at your leisure. I will link it in the description. I really recommend you do. There's nothing for learning, not just about metagames, but for, you know, the the uh, fundamentals of Pokemon tend to be, you know, in universal. They, they're they useful throughout the generations, and I've lost count of how many times something in one generation has inspired something great in another. So even if you don't play GSC, I really recommend reading what these top players... Th this top player analysis of this metagame has. It's, it's an interesting read, if nothing else. So it uh, can spice up a commute for you. So... Uh, And, whoops, computer was weird for me there. Oh yeah, I was in that. Anyway, so, then we go down to 2021, and this is, so, you know, uh, like a month and change before the creation of this video, is where it was finally made official. You know, Raikou is still in the same rank as Cloyster, but it's officially below it. Now, I, I don't think Cloyster should be... That would be truly ridiculous if Cloyster uh, got its own rank. You know, Snorlax rank, Zapdos rank, Cloyster rank, and then Raikou and everything. That, I think, would be too much. But I definitely think Cloyster and Raikou in their same rank, and Cloyster is just barely ahead of it. It is... You know, maybe not even barely. It really is incredible for all the reasons we've gone over. There's also Gengar joining them. So Gengar being in the same place as Raikou and Cloyster is also pretty crazy, but uh, I would definitely agree with that as well. So, uh, it's, uh, once again, this just speaks to how great it is that old metagames... I mean, like, the term, you know, past generation or old generation is almost a misnomer, because, you know, that kind of implies that they're dead. And, but, you know, when these metagames are played year-round by high-level players in you know, tournaments with stakes, then people keep trying to innovate, and that brings about changes like the ones we've seen here. These, uh, these changes to the very basis of this old metagame after more than two decades. It's, uh, it's kind of mind-boggling. So, that's basically it. And uh, here... Earthworm says, uh, finally overtook it. Yeah, uh, long time coming. I definitely can uh, understand that. Uh, offense, definitely. Uh, that's another thing. If we go back to that video I made about how, you know, why offense is good in GSC, why you should use it, and why it's not just all stall. That's just a 
you know, the most common misconception about it. And, you know, and then, like, the, the stalliest stall player ever, Zokuru, is like, guys, you know, offense is actually dictating GSC more than anything else. And, you know, Cloyster being so high in usage speaks to that because it's... With how difficult it is to take out and stop from doing its job, you know, switching into all sorts of things and spreading status and surfing uh, potential boom absorbers and then blowing something up, staving off Snorlax is great. And then that is something that Fortress really has a hard time doing with how slow it is. Uh, you know, Cloyster still functions great when switching into hits with spikes up because it's fast and threatens that boom, whereas Fortress has to walk on eggshells. And uh, Cloyster being as good as it is, is a big part of what drives this surge of offense in GSC. This surge of offense dominating GSC. So, uh, it, it's because Cloyster is, you know, finally being seen on a wide scale as not just the spiker. Uh, you know, if it was as simple as being interchangeable, then, you know, it wouldn't have the use... It wouldn't have overtaken Raikou. Now, Cloyster itself is such a big deal, uh, and just because it facilitates so much and is a threat of its on its own in its own right rather and it being such a big threat in its own right is part of what helps it facilitate the rest of its teammates so uh that's what's yeah that's uh that's the video summarized in a nutshell so anything else so Yeah, alright, that's uh, that's basically it, so thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope it was useful for you, I hope you're inspired to get out there and play some GSC and use some Cloyster. GSC is a beautiful metagame, very skill intensive, lots of fun, offense dominates, I'm gonna have to make another video about how dominant offense is in GSC, uh, just to help dispel that myth further, <laughs> I'll try anyway. Anyway, so again, hope you enjoyed, hope this is useful. Uh, Viva Cloyster and GSC, and uh, it's it's great to see this beautiful, wonderful, scale-intensive metagame with a surprising amount of uh, potential for diversity, as this past SPL has shown. Maybe it's another video. I underrated uh, GSC strategies to try out. So much possibility in this old metagame, you know, constantly derided as stale and boring and stallish and slow. But there's so much possibility, and it keeps changing. Uh, but not changing to an unrecognizable extent. You know, Raikou's still a great Pokemon, and people were going to spam the hell out of Cloyster, you know, way before it was, you know, considered even, you know, universally considered top four, let alone top three ahead of Raikou. So, you know, it's nice that it's changing, but it's also nice that, you know, the very foundation of the metagame isn't you know, constantly being uprooted. You know, the, the nice thing about the old generations is that they generally have uh, stability. That's one of uh, the nice things about them. All right, I think that's everything I wanted to say, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you next time.